Now, we're going to talk about how do you use your midheaven sign to your advantage. So whether you are looking for a new job, you want to move up in your job, you want to improve your reputation for a job, you want to improve your reputation. It is not necessarily that you need to work on your sun sign energy. It is that you need to work on your midheaven. That is what the public views you as. That's what people see you as. If you've ever felt a disconnect from what people in the public sphere think of you and who you really are, that is because of that I see MC axis. I have a video where I talk about that, right? They're going to be polar opposites. People who know you at home, people who know your private life are going to have a very different opinion of you typically than people in the public, okay? Now, when we are dealing with your midheaven sign, the importance is also going to be knowing what planet rules it. And I already have videos about the midheaven, but if we're talking about elevating yourself in your career, at work, getting a promotion, you, what you want to look at is what is the core energy of your midheaven. So I'm not going to go into depth about the different descriptions. Again, I'll probably link the video to my original one. But let's talk about Aries first, of course. So the Aries midheaven person, you're going to want to lead with what you have done and what you're able to do. That kind of bold, courageous initiation. Hey, I'm going to, um, I can start a team of this or I can gather my team to do that. Or if you're like, uh, even in your resume, think of the keywords that you're using. Spearheaded, led, right? I'm really utilizing that Mars energy of Aries to really, you know, share what you have done. Now, you can be more strategic where you can look, well, where is Mars in your chart? If Mars is, for example, in your sixth house, then you're really good at getting things started that require daily tasks, organization, things that have to happen in a certain order. So you're going to want to lead through that. How can you benefit the daily operations of a of a role, of a job, of a company, whatever, right? So that is how you would look at the sign. And then where is it in the chart? And what does that house um, control? Like what are the topics of that house that the planet that rules your midheaven sign is in, right? So that's one way to look at it, right? It's going to be thinking of the core energy, okay, Aries, midheaven people, even if you're the quietest person on earth, you're going to want to tap into what you can do, what you can initiate, what you have initiated, what you started, the spark, the initiator, um, courage aspect of Aries is what you want to tap into. For Taurus midheaven people, you're going to want to tap into what you have built, what you have sustained. What it's kind of like Taurus midheavens, you build up from the ground. You can go to a place that doesn't have a foundation and create the foundation. So you're going to want to share and lead with that in interviews, um, what you have established, what you created, um, how you took something that didn't have any, you know, you went to a job and like, what did you build? What did you create? What did you um, create as a foundation? What did you sustain? You know, also you might want to use words on your resume that talk about how you sustain or um, average such and such and such in order to maintain such and such results. And you know, you want to put the data in when you're doing your resumes, those are um, tips. But with the Taurus energy, you're showing up as people who can get things done because you know how to sustain, you know how to keep things afloat, you know how to maintain and care for something and monitor it and make sure that it doesn't lose value. You would want to look, of course, of where Venus is in that chart. If Venus is in the third house, maybe this has something to do with um, schools or communication, um, writing, um, maintaining something. Maybe you are making money because you are maintaining files. Your job is to or not just organize the files, but your job is to establish a database um, and you're taking the files and you're you're putting them, um, you're putting the files in, you know, order. You're taking them from, you know, print to digital or something like that. But your job is to maintain those files. You are keeping them. You are in some way preserving something. Think of that with Taurus energy. What have you preserved? What have you built? Taurus midheavens, I notice a lot, are the foundation of places. Like they started there, they might have been there the longest, or something about them stabilizes a certain um, team, department, organization, something like that. Now, if we're dealing with Gemini, you're going to want to lead through your communication skills, um, your network. What have you done to create streamlined communication between different people, different departments? You want to really lean on what you are able to do in terms of your ability to think, create ideas, um, be inventive with ideas. You want to lead with the ideas that you have done at your other job. How did you inspire ideas in other people, right? If you have a Gemini midheaven, how did you inspire ideas in other people? 
How are you the link, right? How are you, um, your, how did you use your mind, your expertise? Um, who did you train? Resources are pretty good for like, think of Gemini, like what resources did you give out? Um, what resources did you train other people? Did you develop? Did you create a, you know, a catalog of something for other people? Like what did you buy? You want to look at where Mercury is, right? If Mercury is in the 11th house, maybe this has something to do with technology. It has something to do with you had to create um, systems um, with different departments and you were able to create and streamline collaboration between different different departments at your job or different people um you you know you want to really build on the fact that you you're able to really understand how to get how to lead with your your ability to think your ability to come up with ideas and again this is the mid heaven not necessarily the sun okay cancer you are talking about how you have nurtured something how you have built something used your creativity to grow a project cancer midheavens talk a lot about your project and how much effort you put into it and what you did um really think really deeply about how you can share it's okay for like the cancer midheaven people to focus specifically on like a very important thing because that is what's going to again with cancer energy cancer is not necessarily lending its emotions to everything in the world cancer is picking what it finds needs it and what they care about and they're really nurturing that all the way through um you could also talk about the way you have built relationships and rapport with clients or with different individuals at work um so you want to talk about how important it is to have positive relationships with other people um you want to talk about how you can assess the needs of other people um in some way shape or form so especially if you're in a field where it is important to understand what people need let's say you are in some way you have to um you know create something for clients maybe it's um, even if we're talking about some type of um you are an interior de designer i don't know um if you are someone that creates projects for people if you do um you know art for people whatever the case may be you would lead in any opportunity with helping understand how you have serviced people how you have understood what they needed how do you assess those things um what is a story that you can tell remember cancer is really good with that kind of past memory stuff so what is a story that you can tell to really help people understand you i would say with cancer again to talk about the moon as the ruler depends on where the moon is if your moon is in the ninth house maybe you're somehow helping people travel you're helping people um, relocate um you are helping people even maybe it's in some type of journey it could be it could be as simple as like some people that work for, for like they, in their they work for a college and they work with foreign exchange students because if we're thinking of cancer okay cancer deals with home and needs um and you would have to have some level of you know um personal skills to help someone who's coming from another country to study in another country right and but the ninth house represents foreign travel and the moon being there so that's an example i'm not saying that would always be the case but that's an example of like that cancer midheaven energy of like what you would want to exude how you're able to take care of something how you're able to assess needs how you're able to get results how you're able to grow something what are the different things that you do what are the steps that you take leo all right, so if you have a Leo midheaven, it's definitely about your leadership. It is definitely going to be about the things that you are good at. You can lead with your talents. It's not bragging, okay? I'm talking about your midheaven. So like really showcasing re awards you've won. I think anybody can do that. But I think for Leo midheavens specifically, it's going to work. Whereas for some signs, it could come off like as braggadocious. But if we're talking about the midheaven, this is what people see from you and want to see from you. So if you have a Leo midheaven, it is about talk about awards. Put that on your resume. Um, talk about the opportunities that you've had to lead something. Even if you're like, but but I'm not a manager. I'm not a supervisor. I'm not. But it's like, if you were the person that was in charge of something every weekend, or you were the person that unofficially was in charge of something at your job, that still counts, right? So Leo wants to lead with where you've shined. You want to lead with the things that you have achieved and done. So you want to put more of the things on there that require you to talk about like your leadership, you being the point person, um, any type of um, achievements that you have. Um, you can kind of lead a little bit more with those things. Now, of course, the sun is the ruler of Leo. It depends on where the sun is. If we're talking about the sun being in um, let's see if the sun is in the second house. We might be talking about, you want to talk about the ways in which you have earned money for the company or how you saved money or how you did something with finances, right? So you might want to put more. So even if you have the same job as somebody else, you might want to put in your resume a little bit more about the financial part of it, if it applies, because everyone doesn't work with money in their job. Everybody makes money, but you know, everyone wants to make money, right? You want to get the check. But 
you might want to do that. So that's why I'm saying you want to look at where the planet that rules that sign of your midheaven is because it's going to give you other clues on which ways in which you can show up and shine in that regard in terms of interviewing, promotions, things like that. So when you look at it, it's like, the sun, yes, in the second house there, yes, money is going to be a part of that, wanting to make more money, wanting to be seen. So like you're, you're, you're thinking of this promotion and moving up, your Leo energy is going to shine because you have to highlight your talents. People might not see it immediately. Again, I'm not talking about the Leo sun, I'm not talking about Leo rising, I'm talking about your midheaven. People will see things in you that you're good at and your talents, but it's also up to us to really promote ourselves and show up and sh show out. And so Leo tends to do well also when you have creative efforts, um, when you have a creative way of doing something. So that might be also something you want to mention if you're in an interview process or just thinking of how you want to structure a resume. Now, if we're talking about Virgo, Virgo is going to want to highlight, you want to want to highlight the things that you notice, that you analyzed. Again, when you have a resume, you're going to word it in a very professional way. I'm just speaking how we speak, so I'm not going to, you know, say it the way we put on a resume. Virgo, um, you want to put numbers in your resume. Um, decreased, I don't know, because you work for loss prevention, decreased the number of thefts in our store by 40%. Um, managed a team of such and such. Um, you know, increasing the um, re increasing revenue by such and such. So Virgo, you're going to, and again, I think anybody should do this in a resume, like whatever your results are, put a number to it because it's one thing to say, let a team of 14, but if I let a team of 14 with 92% receiving satisfactory customer service survey results, that means something a little bit different than the same manager team of letter team of 14. But with Virgo, you're definitely going to want to, the Virgo mid you're going to want to put the numbers in there. You're going to want to talk about how you analyzed a problem, how you've identified problems, how you were solutions oriented, those types of things. Of course, Mercury is the ruler of Virgo as well. Um, and so, you know, if you have Mercury, for example, in your, let's say Mercury is in your, uh, in your eighth house, it could be about research. It could be about um, you might be working or more prone to be in a field where you have to do a lot of research, you have to do a lot of discovery, a lot of digging. Virgo is the assessor. So using words to help show that you assessed something that you had to um, c calculate, you had to in some way resolve an issue, reduced. If you had to reduce something, if you had to in some way increase something, again, using numbers, um, really showcasing the ways in which you're present somewhere, means you're aware of the problem and you're able to find solutions. And so it's not about just finding the solutions that your boss or manager has brought to you, but with the Virgo Midheaven, it's like, how are you also able to see things clearly so you're able to also action plan around things that need to get done? If you are a Libra Midheaven, this is Venus energy, obviously. And so we're dealing with ways in which you are bringing harmony to a situation. You are resolving situations. You could be a mediator. You could be somebody that works in some sense of mediation or your role requires you to talk to different parties, right, in order to get something done. So with Libra energy, you want to use words that help show that you are able to collaborate. Um, you are able to um, involve all stakeholders into such and such and such. Um, you want to use words and keywords that helps show that you are the link. You are someone who is good at establishing relationships between clients. Um, you are good at, you know, let's say you work for a daycare or you want to work in education. You might talk about how you have, um, you know, collaborated or the ways in which you have established um, communication, streamlined communication with parents um, to ensure that their child, um, with parents to update them on their child's progress or something of that nature. So if you believe in midheaven, relationships are going to be key, um, knowing how to deliberate, how to talk with people, how to get people on your side can be assets, especially if you have any other Libra energy in the chart. But again, it's Venus. So sometimes you can see people who have a Libra midheaven or a lot of Venus influences in the chart. It can also have to do with the creative aesthetics of something that, you know, Libra can sometimes beautify something. Libra likes to make like put the polish, right? We think of Taurus as the Venus beauty of Ven Taurus as the authentic, raw, um, natural beauty. And Libra is the beauty, the sense in the, the aesthetics, right? So you can sometimes have people where like you are beautifying, you are in some way dealing with something creative. So if there is any way in which you have beautified something, you have modeled something, you created the, you created the blueprint for the, um, the renovation of the office or something of that nature, you want to lead with those things. 
Okay. You again on your resume or when you're in an interview, you don't only have to talk about the things assigned to you. That's easy. Of course, we have a job description when we have a job, but there's always things we do that aren't in the job description. And it doesn't, and sometimes it's closely linked to what our job description is, but there are things that can help you in other roles. There are um, tasks that you've done or even things that you've done that you didn't write down or maybe your bosses even know about, but those things can still be used because you did them, right? Now, Scorpio, if we're dealing with Scorpio energy, we are dealing with, you have the ability to deal with things that are difficult. You can deal with things that are um, very extreme. Okay, you could deal with extremes really well. So you sometimes wanna talk about um, overhauling. If you had to overhaul a department, if you had to um, reorganize um, roles and responsibilities, Scorpio energy can come into a place and say, you know what, I'm transforming this. Nope, this is not, right? They're not steadily working to improve something. A lot of times Scorpio energy can just come in and be like, I know this whole thing needs to change. They're not afraid. There's not that fear there. Scorpio energy can deal with, um, you know, it can deal with situations that require you to um, overhaul, oversee, inspection. Scorpio energy is good with diving deep and understanding things. So inspections, if you had any. Also Scorpio energy could be really good with this concept of how to um, develop other people, how to develop something, how to develop, how to um reassess how to um what's the word i'm looking for transformative use the words that are linked to scorpio energy transformative growth um if we're dealing with any type of money because we know scorpio can be the house of other people's money if you're working in any type of field you know add something in there how you're able to um conserve you save the company money Maybe in some way, shape, or form, you were able to get bigger accounts if you were able to, you know, have um, some type of alliance with other people. Well, with Scorpio, you always want to talk about how you were able to impact a situation. Your skills, your assets were able to impact how something grew or transformed into something else. So talking, this is really good when you're in an interview, talking, like kind of telling the antidote, telling the story of how you had to overhaul something or you in some way, shape, or had to deal with something really difficult. Um, you can get, you know, talk more about those deeper things. It's not just the surface level stuff of, you know, another sign energy. It is about understanding how you're, you, you have this kind of fearlessness about you. With Scorpio energy, highlight the most difficult part of your job. Like highlight the ways in which you overcame those challenges or you in some way were able to spearhead something that allowed for you to kind of take control. Like Scorpio energy, think about, I talk a lot about sometimes Leo and Scorpio as power um, and how the both signs can be related to power, very different energy and how they do deal with it. But I would say like, think about those things, the most difficult situations, because a lot of times you're able to deal with things other people normally would not deal with. So really tapping into that kind of fearlessness about your experience. Um, it's kind of like some people would shy away from talking about like the most difficult thing they had to do in terms of their career. But for Scorpio, mid heavens, that could work. Now, again, if we're dealing with planets, of course, the modern planet Pluto, where's Pluto? Pluto is in the third house. This might have something to do with, um, you know, learning, education, some way, shape or form. You're dealing with, um, you know, information systems. You're dealing with, um, you know, news or you're dealing with something that has to do with um, having to display, disperse information to other people. So it could be that you're really, um, you have, a, you're really good at understanding things intricately. The thing about Scorpio is you're good at the intricate intricacies of things so working in specialties is usually really good for scorpio scorpio is not mutable energy and therefore it is probably not good idea for scorpio to be like i'm gonna do everything right scorpio does really good with concentrated energy so with you that could be an example there now of course mars is the traditional ruler and so if you want to use mars as well could maybe have something to do with um with the saving mars in the fifth house so you want to talk about the ways in which you helped maybe build the confidence up of other people maybe you want to talk about how you have coached up your team and talk about you know fifth house deals with confidence if we're talking about mars okay so mars there so maybe you have a lot of confidence but how are you helping other people how you could talk about how you've transformed or helped the careers of other people in ways in which you are there providing a sense of support and a sense of strength so you could talk about the ways in which you have further developed yourself through the ways in which you have tapped into the talents and experience of the people like how have you used your relationship because remember we talk about the scorpion energy it, it, it does. It's union, right? It's as joint assets. 
everything when we talk about Scorpio tends to deal with, you know, in some way, shape or form, it is about this, this, this something being consumed together, something being merged together. So Scorpio, you want to talk a lot about how you have emboldened other people. How are you in some way, shape or form? Um, you, you can, because remember, Scorpio is a energy that is, that is a water sign. So there is an emotional level there. We're not talking about the, the sappy, sappy, you know, um, we're not talking about the emotions that deal with like romance or things like that. We're talking about the ability for Scorpio to impact people's trajectory. And so that is another way or talk, or you could sell your assets and sell your skills in a job interview or when you're trying to move up the ways in which your presence alone or your skills have multiplied something else. Remember I talked about it, but the eighth house is this ability to have more, become more, be more than what is already there, right? Which usually means having to join up with something else. Again, I have a video. I talk about all the eighth house topics for the most part. So you can check out the eighth house video. Okay. Sagittarius. Now, if you're a Sagittarius in Midheaven, adventure is key. You may have a lot of different jobs, especially if you have a lot of other mutable energy in the chart. Um, sometimes I see people Sag. Um, so we're talking about the Sag Midheaven. But even when I see Sag in the second house, because sometimes these people have um had a very you know a variety of jobs trying to find the right fit because sag energy needs to feel purposeful and when sag energy feels unfulfilled misaligned that's when you get people that can be hopping from job to job so you might have to explain that a little bit but the way in which you would explain that is talk about what you learned talk about what knowledge you now have merge the things together to show your knowledge and your wisdom so that's how it's a sag um, Midheaven, you want to talk about how your experiences make you more profound and understanding things and how they all connect. You, If you are the Sag person that tends to coach people, you teach people, you might use word, you might want to use words around that where you have, um, did you, you know, provided, um, provided guidance and coaching to a team of such and such, um, taught, trained a team of such and such on blank, blank, blank. Um, if you have been in other fields, you want to connect them. So you might say, well, this field isn't really connected to this field. So I don't know if I should put on my resume. You don't have to, but I do think there is importance in finding the link between all the things that you've done to really understand how they're all aligned to what you are here to do. And so I think if you are a Sagittarius midheaven or Sag person and you, you feel like, wow, I've done a lot of different things. I'm never really, my career hasn't really been steady. Use it to your advantage. Show how every experience has been meaningful and what you have gotten out of those experiences. Show what you're now knowledgeable about. Do you now know certain programs? Do you now know certain software? Do you now know certain protocols? Are you now, well, do you now certified in something? Like how do you utilize all of those experiences to really help, you know, you want to talk about the ways in which you've expanded. For example, if you're thinking of like a Sag in a certain setting, it could be the Sag person created a database that shows um all the different types of something, you know, and then again, this would be even better if the per Sag person has Virgo energy even chart, but um, you could have like, when you're thinking of Sag, your Sag mid heaven, you're going to be known and seen for your knowledge and what you bring and what you offer. And so when your energy doesn't seem scattered and like random, and it seems like, wow, this person is just adventurous. And this person is always willing to learn more. You want to talk about all the programs, all the software, the certifications, all the skills, all the things that you know, you might, sometimes when I see resumes, I'll tell you like, I would tell people like, you don't always have to put the skills that you have or the software, the programs you know, unless you're working in a certain setting where that's necessary. But for a Sag Midheaven, you might wanna put those things. You wanna showcase your breadth of knowledge and how well-rounded you are. So for some people it may not work, but for Sag Energy, the more well-rounded you are, the more it's gonna align with what's already in your chart. Okay, now if we're talking about Capricorn. Capricorn is, um, you know, again, a lot of times Capricorn Midheavens, all biz, like you're going to be seen as very business oriented. You're going to be seen as no nonsense. You're going to be seen as somebody who is goal driven. It's kind of like very transparent energy. People know. I feel like what to get, they're going to get certain signs. I feel like there's people just kind of know what they're going to get from you. Now, again, your Midheaven is not your IC. Your Midheaven is not who you really are. It is what the public is more likely to see in you because of the sign there and then the planets and all of that, of course. Capricorn, you might want to talk about the ways in which you have delegated something, how you have, um, you know, chased a goal, assessed a goal, um, dealt with challenges in like what are the challenges what are some of the things that have occurred that you have been able to resolve through sticking to the plan um remember saturn energy saturn rules capricorn you can sometimes see capricorn energy and i would say like did you you know eliminate it some people may look at that word and be like eliminate it sometimes you get a negative um 
connotation. But actually, if we're eliminating something bad, that's good, right? So you could say eliminated um, excess spending for the company by doing such and such. Um, decreased, you wanna use words, you also, I would fluff it up and put some nice stuff in there too, but like action words that sound positive too. But again, if you're talking about decreased, again, we're talking about decreased um, the number of um, errors on the assembly line by coaching X amount of people. Remember, Capricorn energy is the delegator. You do this, you do this, you do that. Capricorn knows how things function and how people function. Um, you also manage something, how you navigated something, how you have organized something, how you have secured something, secured a three-year contract with such an, with, you know, if you're working in like some type of business type of situation. Um, even if you're not in business, you could be, uh, maybe you even work in education or something and you secured a contract with an organization that helps you or something like that. Secured such and such. Because remember, Capricorn Energy, Saturn, we are dealing in some sense of form with this level and need of security. Um, security, literally, like security. Um, you also can maybe talk about that. If you're in tech, like how have you increased the security systems? How have you helped monitor the security systems and things like that? So the Capricorn energy, it's about, it is kind of big boss, big energy. It is not like, um, you know, the fluffy stuff Capricorn doesn't tend to, to, to use. And so when we're talking about your job, um, your career, we're talking about promotions, things like that, you do sometimes want to emphasize the ways in which you are about business, you get things done, you have results, um, you have a goal, you've, you really want to really hammer in because some some mid heavens and some energy can get away with just being like communic communicative and community based and like that might work right for that job or that person but you really want to talk about the way in which you have established what you want and just the ways in which you have maneuvered that not just i wanted to um increase this thing at my job and i did it what are the really the steps that you did to make sure the system works so capricorn energy you want to do a lot talk a lot about the system you want to talk a lot about the ways in which you are responsible you want to talk about the ways in which you are able to assess when there's an error but how do you still keep going all the way through the success of something so even if you're like but i don't work in a field where we talk a lot about goals and metrics and numbers and stuff you still can benefit by being very clear in the way in which you met a goal, in a way in which you were ambitious, in a way in which you delegated, you coached, you trained, you mentored. That was Capricorn energy is because of their, especially as Capricorn energy, like the person, if it's sun, moon, whatever gets older, they were really good at mentoring other people and showing other people the way. Okay, so again, you want to look at where the sign is. Of course, you have Saturn in the ninth house. Yeah, you probably are in some way going to be um a mentor to people at some point in time you have saturn in your you've sat in your 12th house you might be in some way shape or form um helping people who deal with some type of mental illness or people who may deal with being confined people who are um away from society maybe you help people with social anxiety i don't know right i'm just giving examples there whereas if saturn was in the sixth house this might deal more with like actual physical health um, therapeutic health, um, being very um, established, right, in terms of your understanding and your your um, experience with helping people navigate situations when it comes to the physical health and things like that. So that's just a way to think of like the Capricorn energy. But again, sometimes Capricorn midheavens, you have to trust that time is your best friend. Capricorn energy gets better with time. Everybody does. But remember, Capricorn is about that tradition. It's old energy. And so as you mature is when you really start to step into your power. Aquarius, like Aquarius Midheaven, again, similar to Sag, where I feel like uh, a lot of times with that energy, if you're not aligned to a purpose or a mission, you're going to feel like you are not where you want to be. And that can lead, especially if there's other parts of the chart that show instability with work and money, just feel like you're off, off path for a while in terms of your career. So now Sag, I talk a lot about purpose. And sometimes I use mission and purpose interchangeably, but let me stamp that. Purpose is Sag. Your mission is Aquarius because Aquarius can deal more with the collective. Aquarius energy feels this need to, in some way, shape, or form, improve the quality of things for the group. Virgo likes to improve the things, the task. The, the right Virgo like can improve something, literally, the physical, because remember, Virgo energy is earth sign. But with Aquarius, we're getting actually ideologies. And so for you, when we're talking about Aquarius energy, you want to talk about in your interview or in your resume, word choices that you're using, things like that, about how you envision something. Um, not envision, that would be places. Let me see. pause that. How you um, 
initiated an idea. And again, you wouldn't work that on the words of resume, be more professional. Initiation, initiate, initiated something. How you use technology, how you um, revamped something. Because remember, we're talking about invention and creativity mentally when we're talking about Aquarius energy. Um, you also may want to talk about the way in which you worked with a group of people because Aquarius energy is associated with the group. So you do want to really hone in on the fact that you are a team player. Okay, you're a team player. But you also want to talk about the creative ideas that you've had. You also want to, again, you don't want to go too off where some, an interviewer might think, oh, you're not going to follow our rules and expectations at this job. So you don't want to be too, right? You don't want to do that too much. But you do want to talk about the way in which you are inventive, where you may rev revision, revise something, where you may solve something, resolve the problem, solved an issue by such and such. Um, you know, if you are in any type of field where you are being creative, talk about the ways in which you've been creative. Like, did you conceptualize something, right? Did you, um, did you in some way, shape or, shape, shape or form, um, establish something, formulate, like, what are you doing? Because remember, we talked about Aquarius energy. It can be new ideas, new insights. Um, so if you did anything different, if you have a mechanism for how to get things done, if you have a way in which you are showcasing that you are willing to do new things. Also, um, the, the Aquarius energy, you want to tap into to an interviewer, you're willing to try the new systems. You're willing to try and be um, the first team member to learn a new software or the team member to try a new strategy or whatever the case may be, right? So Aquarius energy, like you're in, you're willing to try things out. It's like, hey, if you work, even if you work at a supermarket and they're like, hey, we're going to start um, doing things differently. We're going to start doing this. You can be the volunteer. Like, okay, can I try that? I actually am interested to know. So Aquarius, you can get by a lot by being that invent, that person who's willing. Um, what opportunities do you have? Um, to to move in directions of like learning something new, but being able to try things new. Um, a lot of times, yes, there are certain jobs and positions that want you to kind of like follow the rules, but a lot of companies and organizations these days, because of how fast paced our world is changing, especially with technology, they need people who aren't too stuck in their ways. We need people who are like, okay, I'm trying the new software or I'm trying this new thing on social media. Okay, I'm going to try this out. Right, you're the you're the tester, you're the test, you know, you're the taste tester of everything, right? So with that Aquarius energy, you want to showcase your intelligence, your willingness to try new things, um, and also how you are a team player, you're group oriented when you're at a job, you understand it's not just about you and how you really try to work well with the people around you. You know, you, you ask interesting questions during your interview as well, like ask interesting questions that help show your future, your forward thinking. Um, Aquarius energy, you are forward thinking, you know, that's one of the key words of Aquarius. So ask questions that show you are considering a future at that place. Ask questions that maybe show like, well, what do you see, you know, the industry being like in four years? Because I really would love to be in this industry and I, or I would love to stay in this, um, in this type of work. Where do you see the industry in five years, right? You want to, it's not always about the, yes, the energy of the interviewer is important because, you, you know how sometimes you meet somebody and you just vibe. So as you can tell that in an interview, but you also want to use your energy to get the job, to get the role, or to be seen a certain way in terms of the public, your public image in terms of how others may view you. You want to do that. All right. Pisces. So for Pisces, I, yes. So the midheaven for Pisces, it's all about like you need to feel like you are in some way a part of things that are meaningful work. And so when we're dealing with Pisces, a lot of times we're dealing with like, you want to use keywords. Um, have you created something? Did you envision something and then you created it? Have you developed something? Did you devise something? Have you in some way, shape or form um, created, you know, keyword creative, you know, sometimes Pisces associate with that. You know, did you create something? Did you create um, the model for something? Um, have you in some way... Yeah, because you're like, are you a part of a creative part of your job? Identify organizations to partner with in order to, um, you know, support um, low income families. You know, like what have you what have you done to help something that deals with compassion? Again, you can't just write on your resume. I'm a compassionate person because, that, 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 you know, that might be true. But what have you, you know, jobs want to know what have you done? What are your results? It's great if you're a nice person. And some, of course, some jobs may require that, right? But it's all about what you are able to produce, really, at the end of the day. A lot in the interview about what has inspired you. Pisces, key words. We know we're talking about, um, we can talk about imagination and inspiration and 
vision and dreams and whatever keywords but if we're trying to get a job for pisces it might be benefit you to sometimes talk a little bit about what really motivates you you can maybe get away with that touchy-feely stuff where like some signs can't because they have to use their core energy and it might not be that for you you might be able to share the fact that your manager your former supervisor your parent really motivated you to get into this field and because of that x y and z right um, you might want to talk about people who've been influential in your life. You might want to talk about where you see yourself, right? Because you step into that vision, you, you know, Pisces midheaven. But also the creative efforts of Pisces sometimes can also deal with the fact that you are committed and willing to work through things that require a level of humility, you know, um, being humble. Humility, I mean, I think both of the opposite signs of Virgo and Pisces kind of tap into that humility piece. But I think for you, it's just really showcasing your ability to care, to be um, really in, in bought in to the vision of something, to really understanding it. And even when you're asking questions in a job interview, once you get that opportunity, it is also about asking questions about um, the bigger picture. Like thinking of education, it could be about the fact that growing up, you know, your siblings, you know, you had to watch your siblings a lot and you help establish their sense of identity. You help them grow and you just love having an impact on other people's trajectories, whatever it is. But I think with Pisces Midheaven, it's very important to make sure that when you are applying for jobs or when you are trying to get a promotion or things of that nature, that it's, you're showing and sharing the fact that you understand that things have to be a certain way, but you also are willing to do things in a way that produces a better sense of how does it help the overall of everything creating a mentorship program you work for an after school program right let's say or you're like well i work for a company how does that that work with the company it's like but are you aligned with the mission of the company are you aligned with the vision of the company right it's really about putting yourself almost in there um you know and, and literally talking as if you have the job you might well that's delusional by synergy can be delusional sometimes when i say talk like you have the job it's like well if i were to work here what would it look like or if I were to get the position, such and such and such, you know, or, you know, I envision that in the in a, in an ideal world, in an ideal world role, you know, it would look like this. I've always thought of myself as being in a company like this because I really feel like I want to be in a part of a company where my vision and my morals align with what the company is um what the company is producing sharing with the job you envision yourself here you fit in here i'm mutable i'm pisces you can't say that in an interview don't say that in an interview okay everybody's not into astrology and even if you are even if you're the interviewer is like it's just not appropriate to really do that in an interview i don't think i mean you know of course sometimes things may come up and it's a little one-off joke but you don't want to go into an interview just talking about astrology okay even i wouldn't do that but the point that i'm trying to make is as a pisces midheaven you want to insert yourself whatever it is that you want you want to create that reality for yourself and so it's really important to speak and talk as if you are there already or speak or talk as if you envision yourself in that particular place and just using keywords about the ways in which you integrate yourself how do you integrate yourself into a role into a situation how do you adapt i'm a sponge i soak up all information how do you say that professionally right i'm adaptable i'm flexible i like to really um you know understand intricately the things that i'm doing and i want to make sure that i am in some way aligning um very purposely with the job that i'm undertaking like how do you Use those words and use your word choice in ways to help you. And I know Pisces energy sometimes, again, is not Virgo, but in Pisces might be like, well, I just want the job and I know it's for me. But how do you also convince a person by really being convincing in the ways in which you integrate and see yourself within that vision of that place? All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful for someone. Thanks for watching.